Overpowered heroes can sap the excitement right out of a story, so today I want to give you some tips on how you can keep your characters honest. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. One common mistake that a lot of new writers make is that they make their main characters way too powerful. Sometimes we have these characters who can just wield every weapon in existence and cast every spell in the book, and they're, they're also witty on top of it, and they have all these different abilities, and nobody can stop them, and they steamroll every opponent along the way until they reach the final villain, and then they kill the final villain without much of a struggle, and then everything works out in the end. And this, of course, sucks. We don't want to read stories like this. We want to read stories where there's conflict that every Every stage and every combat sequence is challenged and we're constantly wondering can this hero overcome every obstacle in their way. And in order to write these stories, you need to make sure that your hero is not overpowered. They can be good at certain things, but you don't want them overpowered. And today I've got three tips that'll help you with this. First tip, make your character rely on a certain weapon or fighting style. And this is very important. If you have a character who relies on a certain weapon or fighting style or skill or ability, then that means that they struggle in other areas. And so many t times I see stories where the main character is just good at everything and if they're good at everything that's just boring because all that means is that you're just trying to vary up how they kill people instead of that you want to have a scenario where a character is good at something and they rely on that and when that something is taken away all of a sudden they start to struggle and then things get interesting if a character is very good at swinging a sword what happens when they lose that sword and they have to fight with their fists or they have to pick up a bow and arrow and they have to you know improvise and figure out how they're going to use weapons that they're not comfortable with. Does that put them in a precarious spot? Does that endanger them? Does that cause them to get hurt? These kinds of questions are what you want your readers to think about. What's going to happen when my character loses that thing that they're good with? Now one great example of this comes from the John Wick movies. And in the John Wick movies, John Wick is a master assassin and he is especially great with guns. He will shoot you every chance he gets. He loves to shoot people. He will hit you in the head twice just to be sure you're dead but the thing is when he gets into a combat sequence and all of a sudden people get in close on him and they start throwing punches or they start grabbing him or taking him to the ground all of a sudden he struggles and this isn't to say that he's terrible at hand-to-hand -hand combat but he is much more dependent on his guns and sometimes if you actually watch him in the middle of his fights when he's going at it with other characters and he's grabbing at people or punching people you will see that John Wick is often trying to get a gun and point it at them and trying to get them in a situation where they can be shot. This is what he relies on in his battle. So when you're coming up with your heroes, ask yourself, what is one thing they rely on and what happens when they lose that thing they're relying on? Tip number two, challenge your heroes with everyday average opponents. Now this might sound like weird advice because you're probably thinking, well, why would I want my heroes to look bad against random everyday opponents? I mean, I want my hero to look stylish and skilled. I don't want them struggling every time they face off against any random henchmen. But actually, if you do have your heroes struggling every now and then with, with just regular run-of-the-mill opponents, it can add a lot of suspense to your stories because not only does it add conflict to your action scenes, but it also pops questions into your reader's head. Your reader will wonder things like, is the hero capable of facing off against the main villain, especially because they're struggling against these regular people. How are they going to face off against the main villain? What's going to happen? Are they going to get killed in that final battle? Are they going to fail? Are they going to win? Do they even have a chance? And if you have your reader questioning these things, you can build a lot of suspense over the course of your story, and you can always keep your outcomes in doubt. One great example of regular opponents giving the heroes trouble comes from the Castlevania animated series. And in season two, there's an action sequence where the three main heroes storm Dracula's castle, and they're going after Dracula, but they run into a bunch of his henchmen. And of course, there's this epic battle sequence and the heroes are kicking ass, and especially the sorceress character, Sypha. She's throwing all these deadly icicles at people, killing them all in one hit, until she runs into trouble against one of these assassins who appears to have been paying attention. And not only does he dodge her first attack, but when she rethinks her strategy and tries to attack him again, he pulls off a creative maneuver in order to get after her again before she finally has to finish him off with another 
cool attack. And not only is this something that's stylish and fun to look at, but it also reminds us that she is not invincible. She's not gonna, just going to have her way with every opponent that comes along. She's going to face off against people who give her a hard time. And especially considering that these characters are on their way to face off against Dracula, the main villain, that puts questions in the reader's head. How are they going to defeat Dracula if they're struggling with these everyday assassins? So when you're creating your characters, ask yourself, how can I create some enemies that can trip up my main characters and give them trouble? How can I add a little extra conflict to the story while also posing some questions to my reader, specifically the question of, will these characters be able to fight their way through the rest of the story? And my third and final tip, place concrete limitations on your character's abilities. And this can be something at, as simple as saying that a character only has eight bullets in their gun. So once they shoot eight times, then you know that they're not going to be shooting anymore. Or it could be something a little more creative, like in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson, where if you have somebody who's trying to use magic, they have to ingest certain metals before they can do so. If they don't ingest these metals, they don't have the ability to use magic. Things like that can go a long way. And I think another great example of imposing finite limitations would be from the John Wick movies. In these movies, John Wick, whenever he runs out of ammo, he has to reload. This might sound obvious, but so many action movies don't do this. So many action movies, they they just have the main character, I guess they enter a cheat code before the movie starts and they have unlimited ammo and they can just kill everybody they need to and they don't run out of bullets until they've felled the last enemy. So keep these things in mind. Anytime you can impose finite concrete limitations on your heroes, this can win you points with the readers. This can keep your audience engaged and keep them asking the question, okay, are they going to run out of bullets? Are they going to run out of magic? Things like that. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, name one fictional character who you feel is overpowered. Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.